Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Aditya Gupta. In this video, I wanted to talk about how to solve an MCQ. See, the ranks that I've gotten, be it my undergraduation, post-graduation or DM, are not because of the fact that I knew or I had the maximum knowledge. It was because I'm an excellent exam taker, more importantly, I'm an excellent MCQ taker. All right, it's not because I knew the maximum of other subject, but I know how to solve an MCQ. And in this video, I wanted to show how I solve an MCQ and what goes inside my mind when I'm solving an MCQ and how do I eliminate options and things like that. So for neat PG aspirants, for the INICT aspirants, here it goes. So, and I chose this uh, questions because I know that I did not know the answer to these questions, but what I went in my, uh, inside my head in order to get these questions correct. So for example, all of the following are associated with HUS except uh, the options given were E. coli 0157H7, Shigellar dysentery, Strep pneumonia and Staph aureus. Now, uh, some of you who might not uh, know the exact answer to this question might think, ki, okay, I can at least eliminate one option that is E. coli 0157H7 because that's pretty much known to everyone. Fair point, that's okay. So you will eliminate this option and see if, what are the next three options you might get confused. So I thought, I, I will think of it in this way that, okay, we know that typical HUS, HUS, typical HUS is caused because post dysentery. So obviously Shigella dysentery can probably cause it. So this should be eliminated. Now between strep pneumonia and staph aureus, I would have thought in the way that strep pneumonia, the classification of strep pneumonia is in the form, like, you know, streptococcus in the form of alpha hemolysis, beta hemolysis, gamma hemolysis and things like that. So most likely strep pneumonia will have a component that it can result in causing hemolytic uremic syndrome. And I would have marked the answer as staph aureus. And staph aureus is the correct answer. That's how I would have done it. For, uh, let me take another example. All of the following is seen in digitalis toxicity except uh, ventricular bigeminy, uh, bidirectional ventricular tachycardia, proximal atrial tachycardia with fast ventricular rate, atrial fibrillation. Now, you don't need to know the answer to this question. You know, we know that, uh, you know, dig uh, digitalis causes uh, all forms of uh, arrhythmias. So, how do I get to the answer? We have to be logical in our approach. So, even if I don't know ki kya nahi karata, which it doesn't cause, and they have asked, it doesn't cause this in digitalis toxicity, I would remember that, okay, Digitalis is known for blocking AV conduction. It blocks AV conduction. Now, if it blocks AV conduction, we have an option which says fast ventricular rate with proximal atrial tachycardia. This is not possible. This should not be possible with digitalis because if you're having fast ventricular with, with atrial tachycardia, why is it not causing AV conduction block there? It will cause AV conduction block. So this thing most likely won't be possible. And I would have marked this answer as correct. Even if I didn't know the answer to this question before and I not practice this question beforehand. But the skill that I'm talking about, you know, MCQ solving skill that I'm talking about is not something that I was born with or I know is because of my IQ. It's because I practiced MCQs a lot. And this is the one thing that I'll tell all of you. Practice. In this particular regard, I'm telling you on 17th of April, that is this Sunday, there's an all India mock test by an academy. So an academy on April 17th has an all India mock test, which is free for anyone to attempt. You can use my code uh, Aditya Gupta to uh, enroll in this test and attempt this test for free. Like I said, mock test, practicing MCQs, testing yourself against a lot of people will help you improve your MCQ solving abilities and will help you get the rank that you desire. Apart from this, the good thing about this All India mock test is, apart from it from being free, is that you will get uh, video solutions of all the questions. This is in pattern with all, uh, the current exam pattern and it will enhance your conceptual learning. Like I said, you can use my code to enroll for this test. And I'll again reiterate, MCQ solving ability the single most important determinant after a bit of a knowledge. Uh, people who are in the top 500, top 1000, all have similar knowledge. They just differ in their MCQ solving ability on that particular day. And for improving your MCQ solving ability, you have to increase your question practice. You have to attempt more mocks. And don't miss this opportunity if you're getting to attempt a free mock on an all India level by an academy on 17th of April. I'll solve another question with you. Let's say the question asked is, digoxin action is not affected by electrolyte disturbances, MI, hepatic failure, or kidney failure. Now, at the outset, even if you know just one fact about digoxin action, and you would be knowing that, keep potassium ki wajay se digoxin action come, uh, increases or decreases. Okay, even if you don't remember whether hyperkalemia causes it or hypokalemia causes it, even if you just remember the small fact that potassium causes it, you will be able to attempt this question if you think in a logical manner and I'll show you how. 
सो फर्स्ट ऑप्शन इज ऑब्वियसली एलिमिनेटेड इट्स नॉट अफेक्टेड पोटाशियम अफेक्ट्स ठीक है नाउ यू डोंट रिमेंबर डजेंट रेडी मैटर नाउ इफ पोटाशियम इज अफेक्टिंग ऑब्वियसली किडनी फेलियर इज गोइंग टू अफेक्ट बिकॉज किडनी फेलियर विल इंक्रीज पोटाशियम सो डजेंट मैटर विल डिक्रीज द एक्शन और इंक्रीज द एक्शन डजेंट रेडी मैटर बट किडनी फेलियर ऑब्वियसली इज गोइंग टू अफेक्ट एम आई इज डायरेक्टली अफेक्टिंग द हार्ट obviously digoxin affection uh, digoxin action is going to be get affected mi in turn can lead to shock which in turn can lead to kidney failure mi by itself causes a lot of electrolyte disturbances during in the uh, first phase, during its first phase so obviously mi gets eliminated so answer here will be hepatic failure and if you look at it they actually wanted you to uh, choose between kidney failure and hepatic failure because there are two contrasting options because metabolism of digoxin can be because of hepatic metabolism or can be because of kidney metabolism but its maximum metabolism is because of kidney metabolism but even if you don't know that its metabolism because of kidney you can still logically think that since potassium affects digoxin action kidney failure will increase potassium and that will obviously affect digoxin action so my point is this mcq solving ability that i have or you can also have will only be possible if you attempt more mcqs If you solve your QBank thoroughly and you solve your QBank thoroughly with certain logic, with certain tips, and these are the tips that I'm going to share with you. The first and most important tip is read all the four options. Obviously, you know, even if you don't know the answer to the question, read the options at least, right? Let's say you have a question, all the following are associated with HUS, except, and you think, yeah, okay, yeah, I just remember HUS is associated with E. coli zero one five seven H seven. Let me not read all the options. Let me skip the question. No. Read the option. Maybe you might figure out something. Like in this question, if the answer the question says shikila dysentery, you will be like, okay, fine. Dysentery ke baad hi hota hai HUS, so maybe I can eliminate this. Uh, I can definitely eliminate the first option. Strep pneumonia, hemolysis, maybe, and you might just mark staph aureus as a correct answer. Similarly, digoxin action is not affected by. You might not remember whether it has hepatic metabolism or kidney metabolism, and you just remember that it's just potassium metabolism. Potassium की वजह से digoxin action affect होता है. Still, you will be able to answer get this correct. कि electrolyte disturbance तो mark कर ही दोगे. Then you will be able to mark out kidney failure as well. And am I hepatic dysfunction? Obviously, hepatic failure is a better answer. And all these questions have come in AIMS, and all these questions have come in All India, you know, NEET PG. These are not questions that I just made out of my head. Always think of contrasting options. यहाँ पे देखो hepatic failure and kidney failure. So the examiner is asking you between two, choosing the two contrasting options. Similarly, here one option is distinctly contrasting. Proximal atrial tachycardia with fast ventricular rate in digoxin, जो कि AV conduction को block कराता है. So you don't need to know whether it causes bigemony or not, whether it causes AF or not, whether it causes bidirectional ventricular tachycardia or not. But अगर ऐसा ही contrasting option तुम्हें कुछ दिख जाएगा, तो obviously that is the answer. Here also. इकोला एंड शिगेला डिस्टेंस के सिमिलर स्टेप एंड स्टाफ हर समय अपोजिट होते हैं अपनी प्रॉपर्टीज में सो अगेन दे सम वॉट कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग ऑप्शन एलिमिनेट ऑलवेज ट्राई टू एलिमिनेट इवन इफ यू डोट नो द आंसर टू द क्वेश्चन ट्राई टू एलिमिनेट वन और टू ऑप्शन इफ यू हैव एलिमिनेटेड टू ऑप्शन अटेम्प दैट क्वेश्चन बिकॉज तुम्हारा फिफ्टी परसेंट चांस है गेट दिस करेक्ट नेगेटिव मार्किंग कितनी है थर्टी थ्री परसेंट तो ऐसे तीन चार तुम क्वेश्चन सॉल्व कर दोगे तो तुम पॉजिटिव में ही रहने वाले हो ट्राई टू अटेम्प मैक्सिम क्वेश्चन लास्ट बट डेफिनेट नॉट दिल जस्ट बी लॉजिकल इन एन अप्रोच You don't need to know the every correct option. मान लो एक क्वेश्चन आता है जिसमें चार ऑप्शन तुम्हें दिए जाते हैं कि कौन सा कितने सही हैं तो अगर मान लो इसमें तुम्हें लेस एज्यूम दिस इज द थिंग दैट यू आर गिविंग एंड द फोर ऑप्शन एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट तो यू डोंट नीड टू नो एवरी थिंग टू अटेम्प्ट क्वेश्चन मान लो तुम्हें सिर्फ फोर पता है कि फोर सही है या नहीं तो इमीजिएटली तुम्हें पता चल जाएगा कि टू एंड फोर या वन एंड फोर ऑप्शन है राइट ठीक है या तुम इसको एलिमिनेट कर पाओगे इफ यू नो दैट फोर इज द रॉन्ग ऑप्शन फेर अनफ फिर बचेगा वन एंड टू एंड टू एंड थ्री तो यू जस्ट नीड टू फिगर आउट कि वेदर वन इज अ करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट और नॉट बिकॉज इसका मतलब तो ऑब्वियस है कि टू तो डेफिनेटली करेक्ट है यू डोंट नीड टू नो टू यू जस्ट नीड टू नो वेदर थ्री इज अ करेक्ट ऑप्शन और वेदर वन इज अ करेक्ट ऑप्शन सो यू जस्ट बाई नोइंग टू स्टेटमेंट मे बी थ्री एंड फोर और मे बी वन एंड फोर यू कैन फिगर आउट द आंसर इन सच अनारियो एक और ऑप्शन ले लेते हैं लेट से यू जस्ट नो वेदर वन इज करेक्ट और नॉट अगर तुम्हें पता है कि वन इज करेक्ट ऑन से यू नो कि वन इज इनकरेक्ट तो इमीजिएटली तुम ये दोनों ऑप्शन को एलिमिनेट कर दोगे एंड यू नो टू एंड थ्री एंड टू एंड फोर है यू अगेन जस्ट यू नीड टू फिगर आउट कि थ्री करेक्ट है या फोर करेक्ट है सो डोंट नीड टू नो ऑल द ऑप्शन एंड स्टिल यू कैन गेट टू एन आंसर राइट सो बी लॉजिकल इन योर अप्रोच राई रीड ऑल द फोर ऑप्शन कभी कभी हम लोग जल्दबाजी में क्या करते हैं फर्स्ट ऑप्शन में सही लगता है हम लोग बालत कल ऑप्शन को देखते नहीं है जबकि एक्चुअल सही आंसर नीचे होता है सो रीड ऑल द फोर ऑप्शन एंड कंपेयर 
कॉन्ट्रास्टिंग ऑप्शन में मोस्टली आंसर होते हैं एंड ट्राई गेट इन टू द हैबिट ऑफ एलिमिनेशन देर इज दिस वन थिंग माई माई सीनियर ऑलवेज यूज टू से इन एम सी क्यूज देर इज नो राइट आंसर देर आर थ्री रॉन्ग आंसर्स सो गेट इन टू द हैबिट ऑफ फिगर आउट गो आउट दो थ्री रॉन्ग आंसर्स राइट अपने आप पता चल जाएगा और जब राइट right आता है मतलब तुमने वो टॉपिक पढ़ा हुआ है अच्छे से पढ़ा हुआ है तब तो राइट मार्क करके आ जाओ जब नहीं आता तो रॉन्ग आंसर्स को ढूंढने की आदत बना लो गेट इन द हैबिट ऑफ ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट रॉन्ग आंसर्स ये तभी पॉसिबल हो पाएगा अगर तुम्हारा क्यू बैंक तुमने ढंग से सॉल्व किया है इफ यू प्रैक्टिस एम सी क्यूज थॉरली अदरवाइज इट वोट बी पॉसिबल गेट इन टू द हैबिट ऑफ प्रैक्टिसिंग मोर एम सी क्यूज गेट इन टू द हैबिट ऑफ इंप्रूविंग योर एम सी क्यू सॉल्विंग एबिलिटी थैंक यू एम एन एवर आई स्टे